Yeah, everything's good. All right, everybody, we are live again. Dynasty Mirror Search for Huru. We have the brother Amin Ra um, with us again, all the way from Mobasa, Kenya. Uh, today, we're going to be discussing modern Africa. What are its true realities? Um, you know, Grandmaster has actually been living in Kenya now for how long? How long have you been in Kenya? 21 this years. Point. Yeah. So he can give you a perspective, and we'll speak on how Kenya was and how it developed over the course of 20, 21 years, because uh, he's been there for 21 years. And what we have to understand as well, and I can attest to this, the images, a lot of the images that we see of Africa on TV that's given to us by the media are images that are from damn near 20 years ago. So a lot has changed and we're not giving we're not giving up to date information as far as what's going on in Africa and the reality of it and how it's modernizing. Uh, and we say modernizing, we mean westernized because a lot of people ask me, Dinis, if I move to Africa, am I going to be comfortable? You know, what am I sacrificing? Am I sacrificing, um, you know, all of the amenities that we have here in America to go to Africa? So, and I tell people, whatever you want, whatever you had access to in America, you have access to in Africa as well if you have the money. So I'm wrong. Go ahead, take it away. Yeah, that's what you said is exactly uh, on point. Uh, we need to stop trying to convince ourselves of the fake lies about, uh, you know, uh, Africa, and uh, now start working on uh, and And but it but it, it's true. It, the, the time is becoming more urgent. And uh, we just got to, uh, you know, stop believing in the, the lies and uh, start, you know, taking action towards the plan. Even if you don't come, you should put a plan in place so that you can be a little bit ahead of the game. Like, for instance, uh, getting your passport, uh, looking at the prices of uh, travel, uh, picking an African country as uh, your your adopted country of choice, uh, making friends with uh, Africans in that adopted country. There's a lot of things you can do to prepare you before you uh, de de decide on whether you want to even take the big shot, big step. And uh, again, we're not talking about everybody traveling to Africa. No, we 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 estimate maybe uh, I would say less than one percent would actually come here and uh, stay. But, uh, you know, uh, it, it, w in order for us to establish a, a, a serious base, you don't need, like, you need less than 100 people. I mean, if you can take 30 brothers and they come here with a, with a, um, with a common mind, you know, thinking that on the same line, uh, you know, you can be well established and, uh, and safe uh, inside a group. So uh, these are some of the things that uh, I want to discuss and stop discussing about uh, these ideas of uh, the Chinese are taking over. It's a lie. Uh, the, the white man will get you wherever you go. That's a lie. Uh, uh, white people control Africa. That's a big lie. Uh, so we can get past that and now start talking about what happens at the airport when you arrive in Nairobi or wherever your destination is. All right, cool. So what, um, let me answer this. Um, what, just really just give a testimony on your experience uh, since you've been in Mobasa uh, for 21 years and how, and give us an idea of how, I guess, Kenya has grown and I would say, I hate using the word westernized, but we'll go ahead and use the word westernized for all intents purposes, because that's how people understand uh, modern Africa. They understand it through the eyes of the West. So how has Kenya Western over the last 21 years? You know, it's funny. It looks more like uh, a Wakanda model. You know, it uses a bit of uh, different cultures, you know, have a bit of Western and a lot of African. It depends on uh, where you go and, uh, you know, the type of people that you deal with. Of course, economics has a lot to do with it. There are some people and some tribes here who totally refuse our Western culture. 
So if you go among them, then you know you'll, you'll see a whole different lifestyle. And if you if you deal with uh, some of the other tribes that are m more urbanized, uh, yeah, you'll see a different thing. But in my beginning, I, I came here in 1996. Uh, I knew no, I knew really no one, and uh, I just had a, a Kenyan girlfriend. And she was four months pregnant when we came, and uh, uh, Im immediately uh, I about a week. Uh, I was supposed to be staying with her parents, but her parents uh, uh, stay there, and uh, I found myself out, out in the uh, in the street, with a with a four month pregnant uh, girlfriend, and uh, you know, uh, in the spirit of uh, all of this, if you believe that you're going to be okay, you will be okay, because uh, you know. Um, when I was told I had the two days uh, the farm that they that, they, that we were on, um, immediately things just put, put into uh, put themselves into place, and that's been the whole experience since I've come here. You can't get past the fact that uh, you're in a different culture. That's of course, but um, as far as uh, thinking like the worst thing is going to happen to you, no, that's that's not that's not going to happen at all. So in my 21 years here. Uh, I can just say that it's been been wonderful. Now it's not been without, you know, issues and problems and challenges, but overall, it's uh, I wouldn't I, if I had it all over to do it again, I wouldn't change a thing, not one thing. Uh, let, let me ask you this, uh, Grandmaster. You you mentioned challenges. What kind of challenges did you uh, did you have when you first uh, decided to relocate to Mombasa? Uh, okay. Um, some of the first challenges, hmm, let me think. Uh, I can't really say that they were like uh, uh, challenges because uh, I had to find a place to live. Uh, that was, you know, people had to, you know, tell me go here, go there, you know, then I had to go places and didn't decide. Uh, I found a brand new uh, estate in uh, Comorock, uh, outside of uh, Nairobi. And uh, we, we moved there. Uh, that was a big mistake and a waste of a lot of money. And hello, Grandmaster. Hello. All right, I think we uh, I think we lost the lost the brother. Hopefully, he'll hop back on pretty soon. But everyone, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, make sure you hit the uh, like button. Um, you know, I'm going to ask him some questions about his Wi-Fi, you know, because obviously, uh, you know, fast Wi-Fi is very important or fast Internet is very important we, for a lot of us who uh, plan on relocating to places like Kenya or or whatnot. So I need to just ask him, you know, hey, do you choose to have slow Wi-Fi or are there options to upgrade? So I definitely need to ask him that. So let's give him a couple of minutes. He just dropped off. So. Uh, let's give him a couple more minutes to to hop back on, and then we uh, continue. Okay, here we go. Back on, Grandmaster. Grandmaster, yeah, we got we had lost you. Yeah, wow, well, that was sweet. so. Uh, yeah, so uh, that's uh, uh, the the challenge is not uh, severe. I can say like that because I mean you're in an urban setting. You know everything is here, so it's not like you know. Uh, and there are so many people that are willing to help us. Uh, that's another misnomer that you know goes around here that Africans are are not friendly. It was some of the most friendliest people in the world. Okay, and let, let me ask you this, Mark uh, Amira, your Wi-Fi. I know we have a lot of issues sometimes with your um, your internet connection. Are there options to have better internet, or currently what you're using, what you have, is that the best internet in Mombasa? Well, we got 4G speed here. Uh, unfortunately, I love my my Nokia, <laughs> my Microsoft Nokia phone. It's uh, six years old, and so most of the problems that uh, maybe we have is because I refuse to give in and buy a new phone. You know, they stopped. My, Microsoft sold the Nokia brand, and uh, these phones are no longer available. But you know, I've been using it for long. I'm just like that. So, if my wife, my sister, my daughter, everybody's telling me I'm get get a new phone. Uh, but maybe that's the case. But as far as uh, internet connection, uh, Africa has the highest 
uh, internet users of any continent on earth. And as far as uh, mobile banking is concerned, we're number one in that also. So uh, uh, the connectivity you'll find is a lot better. Like it's cheaper for me to call you on my phone than it is for you to call me in America from America. And it's much easier. So these are these are things that, uh, as far as uh, internet and, and tech things like that go, uh, it's great. Maybe it's just me. Today we're using a different. That I'm using a tablet today, so let's see if we get that that problem. Okay, okay, but are, but are, are there? Um, so so currently, are you using four G or what are you using for your internet the speed? Okay, my phone is six years old. It goes up to three point five G. Now there are new phones out that get four G. And if there there are SIM cards that get 4G, but uh, mine only goes up to 35G. So uh, you know I'm comfortable with that. I don't have a problem. My videos don't stall. I can watch YouTube. You know I don't have a problem with it. I've not really experienced the 4G be until I get a new phone. Okay. Now is now as far as internet for someone's house, do they have options that are faster than 4G? For the 4G home? is it. That's it. Yeah, because uh, you know what else are uh, Streaming, streaming YouTube. I can think, you know, because I'm on, I'm on the internet daily, and I do utilize a lot of money on internet. But uh, I don't see any, uh, any reason for higher speed than 4G. I mean, Africans don't play games on their computer, and they don't have those uh, elaborate uh, games with the joystick stuff. Uh, they've not got, they've not reached that level yet. Uh, for um, Facebook, Mike Zuckerberg was here in Nairobi. Right. Uh, trying to figure out how to deal with the issue. And they told him straight, you know, you need to get M-Pesa and connect it with uh, Facebook. Uh -huh. Once he does that, he's getting over 30 million, 30 million subscribers. can now buy things online and things like that. PayPal just connected with, uh, with uh, M-Pesa. And, uh, you know, we're just waiting for the, you know, we're just waiting for Visa and those guys uh, uh, to start uh, allowing people to pay with M-Pesa. M-Pesa is... Uh, Money banking system, the first one, it was developed in and in, in, in originated in Kenya, and uh, everybody does their transactions uh, utilizing uh, M-Pesa. So it's the same company that runs uh, our our phones, our, our subscribers uh, is the same ones that run M-Pesa, Safari kind. Yeah. Now, are they talking about uh, dropping fiber optics or fiber? Yeah, let me ask you: Is the internet? On the mainland in Nairobi, did Mombasa? Are there more options there or no? Well, I don't know what you mean because I think it's a different model here. We got fiber optics about three years ago. They came and dug up the ground right in front of my uh, my wife's salon and uh, put the put the cable in. And then uh, I went to the local cyber, and the guys were complaining, telling me that they didn't see no difference in that compared to uh, the you know to to Wi-Fi. So somewhere there's a bottleneck or somewhere somebody goofed or something, but uh, the fiber optic high speed never materialized. So uh, what we have is a Wi-Fi 4G speed from two subscribers, Qualcomm and Airtel. And, uh, you know, basically that's what people are using. Those two companies are fighting each other and keeping the rates low. And, uh, you know, everybody's enjoying it like that. But uh, I don't know exactly what uh, black Americans are using uh, high speed internet. Is there a 5G now? Uh, I think like my internet is. Um, internet is the question. What, hold on, I tell you right now, Mister. My uh, with this Xfinity Wi-Fi, Wi Xfinity internet. Um, I have. Um, hold on one second. I have. Oh no, it's it's 4G. It's 4G LTE. No, no, no. Yeah, that's you know, I, know, I know 4G is about the highest, but you see the difference between. Okay, now we have we have many I. ISPs, I use my phone. So I'm using all internet based off my phone. Now they've got uh, a lot of these companies that that, uh, that that give out the service, you pay so much a month and then uh, you get full internet. And they are faster than what I have, you know, according to what I see. And most uh, cybers, they don't use uh, the, uh, Wi-Fi as such, they use these uh, ISP companies. But of course, you know, Kenya has been, I mean, uh, Kenya, Kenya has been awarded as one of the top African countries as far as Wi-Fi is concerned. Okay. And, uh, everywhere you go, you can get Wi-Fi. Okay. So I guess um, we have 4G LTE uh, Wi-Fi out here. Hey, yeah, that's what, what part? 4G light. <laughs> 4G light is uh, different than uh, 
than uh, 4G. Okay, yeah, we have LTE. So I, I know, I guess that's fast. Well, we know we're, we're talking right now, amazingly, uh, all the way across, halfway across the world. So, and we're going, and we're talking to a cable that's going underneath the ocean. Right. So let's be, we should be happy that we, that we can talk back and forth like this, even if we got a few connect this, you know, connections. Ah, cool. So, I mean, what else? Um, let me ask you this. You, mm -hmm. I've asked this question before. The, um, I would say the adversity that you faced in uh, Mobasa or in uh, Kenya, was you moved there, uh, was it worth it? Was it worth leaving America? Most definitely it's worth leaving America. And uh, that's the unfortunate part about it. You can't know until you come here yourself and then live. Mm -hmm. You know, the problem that we have is, uh, you know, uh, we have Negroes who are striving to uh, putting all their bet, betting all their horses on uh, staying in America and dealing with the white man. And most of them, they they just ignore the issues that are that are that are facing them throughout history. It's ignoring the, the ignoring the 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 problems that are there. And uh, you know that's part ignoring is part of ignorance. And as long as they're going to keep doing that, you know they're still going to have this. Uh, they're going to continue to still have these problems, and they're going to be owning these problems. You know, you have brothers here that come up with all of these different stories about Africa, and they're lying. But who's we, doing hey, the lying? Hey, we call them Negro stalling tactics. We did a show on that. Negro stalling tactics. Yeah, well, yeah, they, you know, if you, stalling is a good word because uh, it, it's going to have to end sometime. You can't stall forever. But uh, these lies are not being so much perpetrated by uh, white people or America. Actually, these lies uh, are being perpetrated by black people, afraid Negro men. And uh, they're, they're not seeing the connection between uh, making up lies in order to stay with the white man. They don't see the connection between that and the friction that they're getting with the black woman. You see, the black woman is so frustrated, so, wait, you know, it's so desperate to get somebody that's going to be able to stabilize their lives secure them so they can raise a family and you know uh it, it, this niggas are not just you know they're not you know they don't see that connection so they go home and they argue with their woman over what or what are they going to argue over they're going to argue over what they're going to argue over money and, they, and the reason why they're arguing over money because he doesn't have and the reason why he doesn't have is because he's banking all his marbles on, on america against an opponent who is definitely trying to oppress him and squeeze him dry he wants him to work back into slavery and they're doing everything they possibly can to uh to accomplish that we fight we we we, we fight we you know we march but at the end of the day uh a gener another generation goes by uh you know actually worse off than the, than the previous generation so that's this is an issue i mean let's look at it like this if the U.S. propaganda can lie about things like 9-11, AIDS, right. the black contribution to American, ha uh, American history, eh? and the truth about Africa, if, they, if, if, if the United States can lie about all these things, because I was on the show the last time and these people were saying some, some couple of people, some few people were still talking about, he said there was no AIDS. It's no AIDS. And if we can't see, you know, don't attack me. Don't look at me like I'm crazy. Just prove me that it is. How hard could it be if it, if it was true? But you see, you don't realize the depth of what they will go to to keep the majority of us ignorant and sleep so that they can continue to oppress us and squeeze us dry economically through using racism. So, you know... You're right. Star tactics, and uh, we should get we should get way past that. We should be now talking about. I just got off. The, I'm just at the airport uh, in Nairobi, and where do I go through from there? Or, you know, I'm I'm here in the United States, and uh, I just had a change of life, and uh, I'm considering uh, um, making a change in, in location as well. Because everybody goes to real, real quick, Amara. Diane Corns in the chat room. She she's currently living in South Africa. She's from uh, Florida. She says there is AIDS. Every one of her maids has has it. Can can, yeah. can you, you wanna? 
She's lying. Oh, okay. She can't how, prove. How, how, I, can't, I can't say. I won't say she's lying like that. But I'm saying either she's lying, or she can't prove it. Uh, so uh, no, I when the Ace first came out in 1984, I was right there. When that, when Dr. Robert Gallo came out with the with the notion that it was uh, HIV was the cause of AIDS, and the and U.S. government automatically just uh, in a record time, uh, FDA you know disagreed with them, agreed with him. I, mean, I saw all of that. Said, she said one of her maids. I'm sorry, one of her maids. I misread one of her yeah, maids. Yeah, well, I mean, one of her maids. Uh, it's not AIDS. That the, it's not AIDS that the that the maid had. Remember, the AIDS is a group of 24 uh, 24 or more uh, sub diseases, and so. Uh, the S in AIDS stands for syndrome. So how can a syndrome be a disease? That's the first thing. You see, it can't be. And then when you get HIV and then you collect, uh, you, you diagnose as AIDS, where does the HIV virus go? Does it just disappear? You see what I'm saying? It's a convenient thing. If you break down the definition, you obviously see the, the, the truth. And, uh, you know, there is a video called House of Numbers. Please tell that lady to go watch the video House of Numbers. Come back and talk to me and tell me uh, uh, that her 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 maid still has AIDS, you know. So House of Numbers, you can get it on YouTube. It's free. You can search on House of Numbers on YouTube, and there's the video. Take your time if you're serious, uh, and uh, about really knowing the truth, and you'll find it. But the root cause of all of this, the there must there must be AIDS. There must be AIDS. They're saying you, the, the white man would do that to me. The white man would not do that to me. Uh, yes, he will. He did that to you, and he's been doing it to you. All you have to do is stop ignoring the facts and recognize that if he can throw you to the loop of saying 9-11, a, a plane hit the Pentagon, uh, what is the state of our mental psyche? I mean, what is the state of the mind? You know what I mean? You're going to try to tell me a plane was in, went, went into the Pentagon? No. But you see, there is an apparatus that goes around and tries to make the lie be the truth. You see, and we are, and, and since 9 11, I mean, if they can get away with that, then uh, they can't, you know, what can't they do to us? You know, if they lie about the black man's contribution to American history, how in the hell you think they're gonna ever want to be your friend? You see, this is the case. So, defending them by saying uh, there's AIDS. Uh, or saying that uh, oh 9/11 really happened, uh, you know the way they said. No, you're not. You're not helping yourself, and you're not helping the next generation of uh, children that come behind you. I'm wrong. How much? How much money? Like someone who wants to relocate to Mombasa, how much money can they make per month, and 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 live a a decent, comfortable lifestyle? I got the figures right here. Let's go through that. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> okay, uh, actually, this is not the figures of how much you would need, but uh, this is the figures that go through for that for that uh, action plan that we talked about earlier. Uh, when you have eight brothers that uh, put in two hundred and fifty dollars a month into a pool uh -huh. for eight months, and uh, it allows uh, all of them to go on a trip to Africa and spend two weeks there. So they don't go all eight, all of eight, all eight of them don't go at the same time, but uh, they go in waves, two, then three, then uh, four, and they uh, can sit down and uh, you know establish a home base within that small group, and then uh, look out for opportunities from that point. So this is the thing that uh, uh, that that I wanted to talk to more about later on. But for okay. as far as money that you need to to come to Africa. Uh, this October, or I think it's October or December, they're gonna have direct flights from uh, U.S. to to Nairobi. Dude, they, they, so I, I want, listen, I want to say that you're, you're right. Is either uh, Kenya Airways is gonna be flying direct from Nairobi to I think either D.C. or J.F.K. Kenya Airways. Yeah, so that's gonna you know that's gonna cut the trip time in half, and the price is gonna be around that six hundred dollars that you, you know you were saying uh, before. I, I saw some tickets already. They they're 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 floating around a thousand. I mean, they, hopefully they'll go down, but from what I saw, because uh, I, I, I actually found a ticket, a uh, direct flight, I think in December or November from, it was either JFK or, or DC to Nairobi, but it was, it was about $1,000, $1,100, but I hope it goes down even more. No, it's definitely going to go down, and I found the ticket yesterday for, with Turkish Airlines, uh, mm -hmm. $800, but it went, yeah, it, it Turkish went, through, Airlines. It, it, it went through Istanbul. 
yeah so this uh we're definitely going to see the prices uh uh reduce uh and uh you know so this uh this will be uh, one of the challenges that uh so many blacks have is about the money uh uh that you know that'll be uh, a big boost for people to to be able to realize a, a trip so we're putting together uh, an african eyewitness tour you know to come to kenya where you come for two weeks and then we'll connect you with business people here and uh uh you know uh not for so much of a uh you know like a vacation but it's like an educational tour in modern africa so that people can actually come here and uh with the idea of thinking about either investing in land or you know finding out the truth for themselves and i guarantee you when they come they're going to be they're going to be thoroughly surprised mm -hmm. So this the idea of, of of going to stand in America is nonsense. You know, you can just take a look at some of the things that's been going on. I've, have you heard of this uh, this project that we're building a city uh, called uh, Soul City? It was called Soul City well, in North Carolina. Okay, yeah, okay, we we discussed that yesterday, and the uh, they they shut it down because a a lot of the white Republicans didn't want it to happen. And then B, a lot of black Democ Democrats were against having a, uh, a, a self-sufficient, I would say, black city. Black Democrats, Democrats shut that down too. Yeah, now that's what I'm saying. We can compare soul cities uh, with uh, Tattoo City here in uh, Kenya. Now they came, about the, came up about the same time and uh, Tattoo City is uh, now about one third of the way finished. If even that. So it's the same thing with the uh, California, and and uh, it's booming. So when you compare like that, you can see where the opportunities are. Trying to build a high speed railway. They've been trying to build that high speed railway since I think two, 2011. Uh, Kenya has the SGR here started in 2013. And it's already established in the first phase of it is, is running. Trains go from Nairobi to Mombasa in four hours, where it used to take 10 to 11 hours. So uh, you can see the progress uh, just by doing a simple comparison. The Chinese are here. Oh, and, uh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah, the Chinese are here Six, uh, throughout Africa. I think one of the biggest ones was a high speed railway they did in Nigeria. Uh, they did a high-speed train in uh, Ethiopia. Uh, they're doing a, they're doing a city in uh, South Africa that's about twelve billion dollars. It's not a lot of money when you really break it down, but uh, because of the, the exchange rate uh, and the, and the cheaper labor costs here and the lack of uh, licenses and all those kind of things that you need that people come up with, uh, you can do you, these things are being uh, coming to reality. So uh, you know this. It doesn't make sense to uh, where you are, uh, where we, where Africa is going. And each one of these projects build more opportunity. When you build these high speed railways to develop, uh, 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 you know, from, from, from city to city, uh, it, everywhere the train stops, it creates new opportunity, new cities, new areas of land is opened up. You know, they're building a port in uh, Tanzania. I think that's a twelve billion dollar project. Uh, it's going to be larger than the Mombasa port, and be the largest uh, port on East Africa. And when it's finished, and uh, you know, uh, that's going to open up the interior of Africa greatly. So we already know that the, the, the uh, Africa is not only did uh, trade deals with China, but they're also doing trade deals with each other because they see the future that's coming. But that uh, in two thousand. Just simply 18 years ago, uh, The Economist magazine had wrote uh, a headline, a cover story about Africa saying the hopeless planet. And within 12 years, they wrote up another one that said Africa is rising. And Africa is still rising. Economists are saying that the Africa's growth is, go is going to be continued for another 50 years. And this is, uh, this is a fact. So when I'm here I'm in the business, I got, I got multiple strings of business. I got businesses in martial in martial arts and in, in uh, sport karate and of course in, uh, in and all my businesses are now the the one thing that I, 
uh, is opportunity and growth because uh, you know, the communities and having children all over the place. The middle class in Africa is the highest, is is the fastest growing. So, uh, uh, with anybody in America is uh, Africa, uh, they need to get to the reality. They need to see the true reality of the, of the situation that they're in. And if they can't come here, they should start spilling out that negative, uh, you know, Negro afraid man, afraid Negro man uh, nonsense about uh, uh, negative uh, aspects about Africa. The white man might say it out of jealousy, talk bad about the Chinese out of jealousy, and then the uh, Negro man is picking it up and uh, spreading it even further. Unfortunately, it's a sad case for our people. But the good thing is that I don't think that the one to five percent of the brothers that are conscious are going to really let that deter them, because uh, it's only the people that are going to first come here to Africa and set up are going to be educated people. So, what 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 opportunities um, in my modern Africa do those who are seeking to relocate there have? Uh, like I said before, you know, you have to take a look at this whole situation about moving to Africa as if you were, you knew no one. Mm -hmm. You know, you have to have some money in your pocket, establish yourself, get a place to stay. If you've ever done that, then you're, you, this uh, is no I'm different. I'm around. Do you own property in uh, Mobasa at all? No, I don't own property yet. My okay. wife is always telling me, oh, we're going to, if you don't, but you know, my, uh, my economic strategies don't entail to buy land. I bought land in the U.S. And I, it locked me into a particular place, and I couldn't move. I couldn't be free. So mm -hmm. I was lucky to. I don't know why, do, why, do and, why, why, why do you say that? Say which one? When you say it, why do I say? Uh, you said you had land in America, but it knocked you into a. You you weren't free. Yeah, you know. See, I I went. Uh, I had some business interests, and then uh, you know, at the type of training that I had, I could only work for Fortune 500 companies. So where I bought uh -huh. my house in Pasadena, where I bought my house in Pasadena, uh, I was getting job offers up north in Seattle and these other places like that to go, and uh, I wasn't able to take advantage of them because I had already, you know, sit, sat down and, and had bought a house. So you know things didn't work out with, with, you know, with my wife, and I ended up having a house, and I was just there by myself, you know, in a four bedroom house, two car garage, and a back house, and a flower garden, and uh, you know it was a miserable time for me. And I, I I bought the house when I was young, and uh, younger, and then uh, you know it just uh, you know I was glad to get out of it. You know I was able to sell it, and then uh, you know even uh, spend a year uh, going uh, going back to school, and and then not even having to work. You know, so uh, when I came to Africa, uh, you know I was here in Kenya for like five years, and you know, I, and I and I wanted to explore. I had not been to many places. So in 2000, I had traveled to six African countries. There was no way I was going, you know, uh, they sat around. So uh, now, uh, you know, I'm I'm 60 years old now, and now it's look it seems to be more attractive. I'm gonna stay where I, you know, exactly where I'm at. But where in Kenya, I don't know. It's so it's such a big place. Africa is such a, a large place. Uh, if you have the money to to move around, uh, you know, you'll see that it's you know you can never you can never exhaust. Uh, the the you know you can never be tired get tired of, of going and traveling, seeing new things. Uh, how how are the uh, medical facilities in uh in Kenya or in Mombasa where you're at? Which, which is Kenya? That's a good point because uh, I hear a lot of brothers talking about oh if, if the president has the president has to leave out of the country to go get medical treatment because the uh, medical services in the country are so poor. This is a lie. Oh, no, 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 no. That, that, that's Nigeria. In Nigeria, he literally. No, 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 no. They, they say it here too. But you know what's oh. happening is these older, these older presidents and older statesmen, they have been, they come up in a generation where they were, the facilities were not great, you know, and uh, they have doctors who are in Europe. Mm -hmm. So when they have a problem, they go to their doctor in Europe. You know what I mean? It's not like you know they go to the same doctor and the doctors in Europe, so that's where they go. Yeah, Kenyan doctors that they had here, and they and they go and uh, start practicing in 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 foreign countries, and and that's what, you know, these guys go for those type of treatments. It's not necessarily because the the facilities are not here in Kenya. You know, Kenya they just did heart surgery here, so you know, just like everything, uh, the services are growing. But if you just uh, if you're an older person and you know, uh, 
uh, and you know you're kind of sickly you know you need to be near a hospital whatever like that you it, it, there's hospitals and ev they're everywhere so private ones and public ones you know i have my children were all born in the public hospital the one they say uh, obama was born in and uh you know uh i didn't see no problem with it you know with that uh you know uh they have private hospitals but me personally i feel like the they charge too much you know and now public hospitals are free so you know i had my kids i didn't have to pay so I, I went to the hospital and seen the place it's clean it's nice you know i mean that makes no sense to me but you know you have you have africans just like you have americans who they must they could not be caught dead in a public facility you know they have to go to a private hospital for you know like that so if they wanted that option it's also here all right, let me, okay, let me ask you this too. Uh, somebody made a great comment in the uh, chat room. They said, African Americans are waiting for Africans to, de to develop the continent first before they start to move. Is that smart? They're too, is they, they late. What do you mean, Wait, develop the continent? What they think? They think like there's no, no roads here? They're choking, they're freeways. You know what I mean? There's freeways here. So, you know, uh, these, are, these are ignorant people that just, you know, Negroes that just want to try to make up excuse stuff to excuse. You know, okay, fine, got them, but they should not come on the chat line and come on TV and talk about. Uh, I'm waiting for them. You know, you're not waiting. You just wait. You're stalling, like you said. They're just stalling. They're not gonna never come. Oh, this, never is gonna Negro, come. this is a Negro so, stalling tactic. It's a Negro, Negro tactics. It's all. You know, the the, the cottage black man and uh, uh is, is 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 not going for that. But the problem here is that you got some people who are being touched. You know, because I feel you have to be touched. I mean, I was just sitting in my living room. I can see you. I can tell you the moment. I can see what was coming out of my eyeballs. I was sitting at my desk, and I remember just thinking. And then I was like, I gotta go to Africa. You know, I can't be a hypocrite. I can't talk about being black conscious if I don't know the place. You know, so uh, and that's how it starts. If you get that, if you if you get that touch, uh, you know, you should you should not let it go bypass. Because I believe that this is the ancestors calling you. You know, you've been chosen, and uh, you great things are, are and opportunities are, are, are waiting for these people that are in America that are going to come to Africa and then uh, do great things. I came here, and uh, thing, you know what I mean. And so, uh, you know, I look at my life, and I, and I was like, I was just a regular person, one of one of many in the U.S. Uh, struggling and, and trying to 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 run a martial arts school there. And uh, when I came to Africa. I imagine I'm teaching Kempo, the founder of Kempo, and about uh, all the founder, the founder of Kempo. The Kempo has 150 black belts, and uh, in in Los Angeles, and uh, in its Los Angeles area. And who was I? You know, I was a student of a student of a student black belt. When I came to Kenya, I look up and I'm talking to people, and they know they don't. They've never even heard of the word uh, Kempo. Can you imagine? So I. Scratch, not even no one even knowing what Kempo was. All they knew was karate and taekwondo. So, when, you know, I they had to trust me. You see, and uh, slowly but surely, I started teaching the first five people, then ten, then twenty, until we had twenty nine schools, over five hundred students active. Yeah, and today we're still growing. Today they're they're giving someone is giving a tournament in Nairobi. One of my students of my students. Promoting his own event. God bless them. You see, it's grown beyond me. And so these are the things that I can look back at my old age and say I contributed. But uh, there are so many brothers that uh, are in the U.S. have talent, and racism is going to curtail that talent, and it may never be used. Hmm. So yeah, they need to come. Not listen to the the, the nonsense. Completely, I, modern Africa is here. That's why I always say modern Africa. You know. All right. Um, how does Chinese going over there? All of this. Okay, hold on. Okay, I'm trying to read this question. How does Chinese going over there doing all of this? How does this impact Africans in terms of our Chinese getting a foot of Chinese getting a foothold into Africa because the Chinese don't like black people? This is a lie. This is. A, can we go to the next question? Because you see, the person, you know, now they're embarrassed. So they know they can't come up and say uh, China is China is bad and China is going to overrule, uh, going to colonize Africa, blah blah blah. 
Uh, so now they're coming up with sly ways to to re you know uh, to repackage this same old story. The Chinese and the Africans are doing great business together. They're doing. Oh, great. Right, but they have been, been doing uh, great. Actually, I'm they have been doing great business. They have been doing great business. What the what America and what black people in America need to realize is that in 2001, China would uh, join the WTO. China, China joined the WTO in two, in 2001, and immediately manufacturing jobs dropped down to the lowest level. And blacks were 15 percent of the uh, manufacturing jobs before the China joined the WTO, and now they're like six percent of the of the manufacturing jobs. So your problem is not China. China is doing what it's supposed to do. The U.S. is the one who 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 fucked you over by uh, allowing all the trade jobs to go into China. The big, the rich got richer, and the people in the, in the country now, where they were, where they used to work for fifteen dollars an hour, twenty dollars an hour, now they're working for ten dollars an hour, <laughs> you know, seven dollars an hour, and you know, you don't see it. I mean, you know, right now the 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 unemployment rate for blacks is at its all time low, as low as forty years or something like that. But the, the jobs are not the same. You know, the jobs are not the same. You you're working the same amount of hours or more, and you're working less less money. Right. Those jobs that are in, right. those jobs that used to be for you can get in and go for twenty years you can't and you only have a you only have a thirty year work you know you only have like thirty years of work in you I mean work time you know got the thirty years so in the old days you could get like a job work that job for twenty years and you'd be secure even if you lost that job you had experience in that in that field you could get another job but now it's not like that you go you work. Work for four or five years in the job, you lose it. You go looking for another job. It's not the same type of work that you was doing in the other job. You go, you work five years. By the time thirty years comes up, you don't have no value because you get, you know, your experience is not as great, and new people have come into the market. So, America, you guys, people got to wake up and see. But I think the concern is uh, a lot of Africans and Black people who live in China face racism, and is, is documented. I mean, what are your what are your thoughts on that? I didn't even understand what you mean. Racism? Who? A lot of Chinese are racist towards Africans. Hell, here in America and in China, specifically. So, what are you, what are your thoughts? It's on a that? funny thing. It's a funny thing that the the, the uh, Chinese and black people in America they don't get along, but the African and the Chinese they, they they do a great business together. So you know, this is not the, the Chinese and the Africans are doing great business, and uh, there are a lot of people in Africa that are you know. Uh, are not urbanized, you know. They're not urbanized. In fact, the majority of Kenyans that come from the rural areas. So when they see that kind of progress, you know, they see foreigners. You know, some of them have a negative reaction. That goes anywhere you go. You go, you know, even on Star Trek, they have they start throwing spears at the at, at Captain Kirk in the beginning of the movie because <laughs> he's different. He's not he's not like them. They don't realize that Captain Kirk is on that planet. Is is about to save their you know save their whole planet from being destroyed. So it's the same problem. It's the same issue. Uh, it's a non-issue because the Africans are not violent people. They are running around here beating up Afri uh, Chinese people and catching them on fire and hanging them like the like like the white man did. They're not coming kicking black uh, Africans out of their out of their homes. So uh, this is that, that, that's just another you know fake uh, fake news story. Uh, and like I said, I've been here 21 years. I don't have one African. Fr I mean, I don't have one Chinese friend. I forgot. I don't even. I, I I see them every once in a while, and I want to go up and talk to them. But I'm like, why? What am I going to talk to them about? Really? I'm just saying because they're, they're different, you know. So uh, uh, this is not even it's not even an issue. There's too many black people, not enough white people. And they be about people talking about white people are running the government. That's nonsense. Anybody can go back to 2007 and eight. Look at the WikiLeaks. Just this, just Google, just Google WikiLeaks Africa. How the U.S. government was talking so much shit about Africans? Do you think that the African people in charge is going to allow uh, white people to, to be in their government? No, there's not enough white people here, so you can't even get a white congressman. You can't get a white policeman. You, you don't even see that because there's not enough white people to warrant having an elected official where they can be in some sort of position to be able to run a country. That's just joke. All right, somebody uh, in the chat room asked, uh, appreciate the super chat at Akin today. Uh, have you read Chancellor Williams' Destruction of Black Civilization? Ah, my favorite book. In fact, uh, whenever we used to, well, not now, but 
But whenever we used to have power outages, I used to go get that book from Chancellor Williams and read it. Uh -huh. You know, at the at the end of that book, he uh, he wrote a plan talking about uh, you know what would happen in the next so many years. You know, when he uh, he did an interview, he was talking about the book. He said he didn't he wanted to make a like a five volume set, but uh, you know he he didn't have the funds. So this book is a short version of it. Uh, uh, yeah, I love the book and uh, it inspires me to about what's happening. But uh, the last chapter of the book is uh, the best part of the book uh, for me now, you know, where he talks about his idea plan about what to do in Africa. And yeah, so uh, we, are, we, we, we shouldn't even, we don't have to look at the, the destruction of black civilization by Chancellor Williams. Uh, what we need to do is just take a look at the Black Panther movie. <laughs> you know, go back, <laughs> go back and listen to those guys talking. Go back and listen to the the, the, the black brother talking about you know how uh, you know how he was done wrong and uh, and that the African had, done, had treated them wrong. You know, there are a lot of there are a lot of hidden statements in there that are pertaining to what's going on right now uh, between the two groups. And at the end of the day, uh, you know. I, I, I look at the uh, the movie and I see the uh, Wakanda city and I'm like, I'm looking at the buildings and I'm saying like, what are they doing in that building? They got these big office buildings and I'm like, what kind of trade, what kind of business are they running when they are a closed society without being connected to the rest of the world? I mean, what kind of business, you know, they show that flyover scene where they're showing the buildings. Just go ahead and want to ask yourself, well, who's occupying those? Where, are they, where is that train going? The yeah, high speed train going? And why is it going so fast? You know, in a city that it has no, you know, that has been kept uh, enclosed. The fact of the matter that Africa has to break out, you know, and Africa, Africa will break out as soon as it gets itself stabilized. It's going to call in all black people to, to come. So maybe three, four generations from now, this might happen. But uh, right now, uh, America, which can also see the future. It's like I'm not gonna let these I ain't gonna let these niggas go. I can't let these niggas go. He can tell you I'm gonna let you go, and as you go to the go to the airport, he's shooting you in the back. And that's exactly what's happening. They're locking you down. They will, who in the hell makes a, 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 a you don't pay a you don't pay a child support, so they take away your passport. You don't pay a child support, so they take away your passport. I mean, you commit major felony crimes, and they don't take away your passport. You know, you drive, drive, run into somebody and kill them. They don't take your passport. We have to realize that in the justice system, in the home, home place, all of these things, they, they, they're working on us. And, and we're not seeing the connection between what they're doing and, uh, you know, the fate of, of the black man. Population is already being, is already disappearing. Hmm. See what else we got here in uh in the chat room. So what? Well, back out here now. I mean, th this is the thing, Abiral. Like, uh, of course, another stalling tactic is, um, uh, well, the Africans haven't reached out to Black America, or they haven't uh, apologized for the role they played in slavery. Uh, what what are, what are your thoughts when people make comments like that? Well, can you say that again? What comment was that? Now, uh, a lot of black Americans are upset because they feel as if, um, I would say, Africa hasn't made amends as a continent, or not even a continent, just they haven't reached out formula, formal, formally to black America. Uh, what are your thoughts what on that? Well, where, where was black America when, uh, when uh, South Africa was under apartheid? Where was black America then? Huh? All that African don't see you guys as black Americans. They see you guys as Americans. So all I know is that during apartheid in the U.S. Congress, every 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 bill that dealt with South Africa apartheid. The I, I gotta, I gotta disagree with you on that one, Rob. Black America was very cool when it came to apartheid, and and kind of kicked well, it off. Yeah, Stevie Wonder, Stevie Wonder, Stevie Wonder, no, Stevie Wonder came up with a song and a couple of people to to, to highlight the fact that there was a that they were having that problem. But as far as the American government is concerned, every uh, there was every bill, not every bill, whatever they they voted in Congress, uh, every bill they voted in, they voted for South African apartheid government. They sided with the apartheid government every area in the UN. So whenever there was an issue that uh, dealt with uh, human rights in South Africa, America sided with the South African government at that time. Right. So go back and look at the history. 
So, and I, like I said, the Africans don't see us as Black Americans. They see us Black Americans who li- are Americans. So the, the connection is very swift. If you're in America, obviously, uh, you you part of that process. And I see the process of America, what, what was going on in the '60s, uh, you know, uh, you know, as as an American issue, not as a Black issue. See, what our problem is that we need to be, we need to get up out of there, and then that's when you can be respected. You know, how many times have I met hundreds, hundreds of Africans when they say, "Oh, this black, this black, this, this I'm in Ra, he's here from Africa, he's here from America." Oh, okay. How do you like our continent? I, I live here. They go, "Oh, you you've come home, great, great." Well, you know, so uh, that's a, that's a key. That's going to happen until we get our asses back home. Because this now, you ain't real, and if you ain't real, if you in America talking about. Uh, expecting some African to come get you. You real when you bring your ass back and land in the, in, at the airport. That is when the African was, is going to show you the hospitality. He's going, he's going to try to help you uh, get on your feet and uh, you know and support you whatever, whatever on whatever business adventure you, you're doing. So uh, unlike if you were, was in the U.S. and you and you and you had some and you had some problems and you had to go to somebody to get some help and you walk up to the desk and it's a goddamn white man. You know, all of us have experienced that that feeling, uh, and having to you know have to tell him your problem and then listen to what he's gonna have to tell you. Yeah, so uh, it's no it's, it's no uh, accident that we are in a position that we are in America. We already know that this idea of uh, brothers talking about having a homeland in America is so foolish. You know? Expand on that. Why, like, expand on that? Why do you think so? Why do you think it's so? Ah, funny? this thing is the biggest silliness, man. Look, uh, look at Dr. Claude Anderson. Mm-hmm. Like How do you talk, feel about Claude Dr. Anderson? Dr. Claude Anderson? Dr. Claude Anderson is talking about paranormal. He's telling you you're gonna go through three levels. I don't want to give away the book if nobody hasn't read it. Look, look. But anyway, gonna go through so many levels. Yeah, you go. You go. You go buy your politician. What white man you gonna be able to buy that ain't gonna be taken? Gonna be bought back by another white man. <laughs> you know, it's ridiculous. Hey, and then you just, hey, repeat that again. Oh, repeat that again. Yeah. Good point. Repeat, repeat that again. Huh? What white man you gonna? What white congressman you gonna buy that another white man ain't gonna? I'll bid you. You know what I'm saying? I'm saying. So you don't have nothing in the first place. Talk about buying a politician. And then, what white man you gonna pay for him? Telling him, okay, now go there and, and make Soul City a reality. Hey, you think that white boy gonna be able to <laughs> to defend against all the other white people that's already saying no? And they got more power than you. You're a minority, less than eight percent of the population talking about you gonna do something. It's impossible. And why would you want to stay in in America? It's impossible. The history shows that it's not going to work. I go through an idea that we're gonna go through politics and, and killing us. Because at the top of the at the top of the food chain, everybody's white. Go to the Pentagon, they all white. You go to the White House, they all white. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know, so that's gonna work. You know, and there's a doctor, doctor, doctor Omar, Omar Johnson. He wanted to open up a school. Now, even him, even him, he knew better. He was, he was, he was you can catch him on some videos talking about, they, I, I wanted to have a school in Africa, but, uh, you know, most of the donors paid the money came from America. So we're going to have it here in Chicago. We're going to have it here in Detroit. You know, if he ever get a location, it's never going to work. It's never going to work. He's never had the money. He's talking about, uh, you know, so he was a principal. The difference between being a principal of a school and being somebody that's in business. They don't cut the heat off and all and everything. And even if they don't cut the heat off, you're not you are not you are not going to be able to the first one they're gonna have one kid come in that school that's gonna be under the microscope and complain about the education is bad. Uh Dr. Umar hit me or tried to have sex with me, and uh that's the end of the school. You see what I'm saying? So it's, it can never work because you have it in, in America. Now, if you put that same paranomics, if you took that same idea of a black uh, conscious uh, school in Africa, in Kenya, it would work. You see, it would, it would work because the land would be a lot cheaper. You can get more land. You got you know better opportunities. It doesn't make sense. You're going to take a kid, black kid, put him in a black conscious school, educate him in black conscious, then throw him out into the world where most of the, where the, most of the population is not black conscious. How can that work? Huh? It cannot work. What's he going to do? He's going to, in order for him to even survive in America, he's going to have to drop that black consciousness and for him to get some sort of employment to make that to make a value of the education that he was given. You're going to go to a party, you're going to look like an oddball. Black conscious people are not many in number. 
you know, black class people are not many in numbers. There's too many Negroes out there. The moment they find out you when you come up from the Marcus Garvey Academy, they, they, you, you can forget it. He walking around doing all of this talk about what, what white people are doing in America. How in the hell is a, is somebody going to go for a job in some place with Michael, Frederick Douglass School on their resume? Can't happen. Hmm. Let's see what else we got here in the in the in the chat room. All right, so <laughs> so so I'm around. Just um, I mean, what else can you share with everybody in the chat room as far as um how how you're a uh, you're a uh, I would say your reaction since you've been yeah this is, yeah. Yeah, of course. Taking that bit, take baby steps. Take baby steps. Some of you don't even have passports talking about I'm coming to Africa. Take a baby step. Just go find out the price. Find out the air. Go get the application form from the from the from the post office or where you get it from. Like 180 bucks. If you like 150 to 180 bucks. I swear I thought it was more. No, no, anyway, no, no. Maybe. No, it's not. It's not. Okay, well that's good. But anyway, yeah, just take the baby steps. You know what I'm saying? One small step at a time. Go toward it. Go. You know what I'm saying. Remember, you can always go back if, it, if the shit is not what you thought it would be. You know, you can always go back and come back again. You can go back and try. Go home. Back and work. And come back again. You see. So, uh, you know, I'm saying myself is that after 21 years of being here, you're gonna find it like paradise. You know, every every black man goes through a midlife crisis. Not mm -hmm. everyone, but most black men go through midlife crisis where they have get divorced. Uh, you know, the, or whatever, you know, and you have uh, you have that change. You only got a thirty year cycle of uh, uh, work uh, work time with you before you get in. You get too old, and uh, take that chance. You know, put that on your agenda. You know, uh, great things will happen to you because if you stay in the U.S. talking about race, I mean, there you can't uh, doing your children a disservice. Because America is not the same as it was in the '60s. It's not, and it's even worse today. You know, as far as black people is concerned, we are disappearing, disappearing out of the country, becoming more of a minority, and no more communities. So, if you don't have a community, where do you have a place to bank your money? You know, where do you have a place to invest your money? You can't invest your money if you don't have a black community. Now, blacks are just walking around like it's okay. You know what I'm saying? They're going to go live with the Mexicans uh, over here or, you know, my neighbors are our multicultural neighborhood. But, you know, you, 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 that's not your people. And Mexicans, they, 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 got, their, they got their communities. They, you know, white people have their communities. And they don't. But you trying to go wherever you see you can get a foothold, you, you, you go. And, and at the end of the day, uh, this, this is going to cost you because your children are not going to be able to grow old enough to support you. In your old age, you end up maybe trying to support them. Have old grown children already living in a home with you. So, you know, you should see the, you should see the issue. Why go there when you have a land that's full of opportunity? I go, I'm walking down the road every day and I'm seeing on post signs, jobs, jobs, jobs available, jobs available. We need this, we need that. You see, the crime level here is very low because the young people are working. There's, there's, there's a plenty of employment. Although you're going to have people tell you, no, it's not. That's in every society. But uh, you can just see that uh, in the morning, you see people rushing to work. In the, in the midday, you don't see anybody. In the, in the evening, you see people rushing home from work. So, hey, so somebody in the chat room said the people who uh, kind of object to relocating or doing what you did, they said African Americans can't even build, up, build these ghettos, ghetto places they live in. How are they going to rebuild Africa? That's what Queen Mina says. I think Queen Mina, I don't know where Queen Mina is from. What but. do you need to rebuild? What do you need to uh, rebuild here? Why? What do, you, what do you need to rebuild? You need to come here and, and, and see for yourself. It's already built. You know what I'm saying? The only thing they need is the labor. All they need is the new ideas, the concepts. You might be somebody that's definitely needed in, in Africa and you don't even realize it. But you might have worked at you might have worked at Walmart. And uh, you, you know, you were you, you had a specialty job in the warehouse division. And here, somebody might have a have uh, opened up a warehouse, and they don't have somebody to to run that warehouse. And you have their expertise, and you don't even realize it. So they, you know, uh, 
it's not a matter of build uh, Africa. No, Africa is already built and being built even more. They don't need help with building. Trust me. What they need is expertise. They need the expertise that we have, the creative, the creative ability that we have. We are very creative people, but Africans are not that creative. I, I, you know, I'm sorry to say. You know what I mean? So that's why they listen to our music. Uh, a lot of times, that's why they dress like we dress. You see. So we uh, we we have that in, in us, and we should take it from the U.S. and, and bring it to the uh, bring it to Kenya. You may have abilities that you don't even realize, but as far as uh, building, Africa's already been built. It doesn't need somebody to come there and build it. It just needs to come somebody to come and occupy the many new apartment buildings that they they're popping up every day. Mm-hmm. All right, uh, uh, Grandmaster. What we'll do, we'll go ahead and um, I mean, let, let me ask you this before we close out. What what perks will one have by uh, relocating to uh, Kenya over America? I mean, the perks? Well, you know, it, the list is the list is almost unending. You know, uh, the list. Is, well, the number one, the number one perk is that you won't have to deal with racism. That's the that's the number one perk. And you don't realize how much racism affects your life until you're somewhere where it doesn't where it doesn't matter, you know, where it's not an issue. And that uh, that that right there is the number one. In other areas, uh, like I told you before, uh, you know, the Africans are there for us. They want to help us. I'm sitting here with like what one, two, five, ten, six, seven brothers here. All of them Kenyans are from different different work. We come here, we sit down, we drink, we talk. It's a great thing. Yeah, uh, something that they don't do uh, in the United States. You don't have to work or, or, or hurt people's feelings. You know, it's just a peaceful place. And peace of mind is what we all strive for. Even when you talk about, I want to get money. You want money so you can have peace of mind. But that you know that you're, you're working from the credit from that area where you know you have so many bills, credit problems, and you just want peace of mind. If you have if you have an opportunity to get a new start, you should you should you should take that chance. You know, you, once you're here, uh, you know, you can throw a little money back to your whatever bills you have in the United States. Uh, they're not going to really come here and grab you. But, uh, I, you know, I don't suggest that you run away from your bills, but I'm saying you can get a, you can manage them from where to mine here. So uh, that, these, these are these are the uh, things that uh, you should look at. You should, you know, you should take uh, while they're still available to you. Now let's speak on peace of mind. Let's let's expand on that. When you get peace of mind, uh, I want you to expand a little bit of, a little bit more versus, uh, I guess, peace of mind from a Western perspective. All the things that we're talking about here about traveling to Africa and leaving America and all the problems that you have in America and blah blah blah. All of this is based uh, comes down to quality of knowledge, wisdom, and peace of mind. Peace of mind is everything. When I was in the United States, I, it was it was always hectic. We run around in a rat race. Uh, uh, yeah, having to work to face white people every day. And when I was working in corporate America, uh, being realizing that I had been had been duped by somebody, you know. Uh, and the list goes the list goes on. Families that are family members that are jealous. This is a, this is the issue, and uh, families that are not strongly uh, knitted together, everybody's trying to do their own thing. Uh, there's nothing that holds us together, you know. It's nothing that that, that that holds us together there. But in Africa, it's it's, the, it's the, I, mean, I can say it's almost the complete opposite. You know, everything is already in place. These people have centuries of dealing with centuries of dealing with each other. Peace of mind is there. Now they have arguments. Really, do they really? Really have something going on here and there, but as far as uh, the levels of uh, psychotic behavior that people going into schools and shooting each other, uh, you know, uh, you don't have that. And uh, you know, you know, it maybe it doesn't, you know, that thing doesn't really affect you until somebody shoots at your kid's school, and you got to decide uh, are you're going to keep them in the school. And every day they go to walk out the door, you wonder if they're going to be if they're going to be okay at school. Uh, you know these kind of things. You don't you don't realize it until you leave it. That's why I say people come 
come here is the people themselves. You know, people can judge people. You can look at the African judge him in his face that the guy is okay. That the issues that we that we have in the United States are, are just not there. It's a much happier life, if you ask me. Okay. Uh, and the last question. Um, does Kenya have uh, extradition treaties in place with the EU and the U.S.? I don't know. What do you mean by extradition? Uh, I, I don't know. Uh, I guess... Oh, no, no, no. Okay, this means... Uh, and this might be... Hopefully, you know, he's not asking this from a... Uh, I'm a dusty Negro, and I'm going to get involved in some dusty Negro uh, activities and go to Kenya, and hopefully... Uh, the West can't extradite me to to to, uh, to to I guess charge me or send me back to prison. That's what he means. So if basically, if someone commits a crime in we'll say America and they flee to Kenya, can Kenya extradite or can America extradite them back to uh, America to face charges? That's a that's a criminal okay. ass question. That's a more dusty. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You can. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, I, 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 I don't see. I could not answer that, but I, I'd have to. I wouldn't even be able to answer that because uh, you know I don't have no knowledge about the, what felon is. I don't see like. Uh, um, okay, first of all, another thing about the United about uh, Kenya is that the police force are not uh, uh, militarily equipped, uh, technologically equipped to uh, do such a thing. Uh, you know, if you if you if you come here and you live a peaceful life, you nobody's gonna come knocking on your door. You know what I'm saying? So uh, it's only when you the police force here uh, they're, they're not they're nothing like what is in the United States. The police force is a reactionary force where if somebody has a problem, uh, you know they go to the police station. Uh, they don't call the police. They don't you know because it's rare. You know what I'm saying? It's rare that you don't have that kind of you know, uh, hostility where you got to hear sirens all day long. I can't see, I've never, I can't, I can't remember when I have seen walking down the road and I've seen like a police cars, four or five police cars in front of somebody's house at, uh, or they, or they, somebody's being dragged out of somewhere. No, I've never really seen that. Africa is a very peaceful place. And they had, a, they had a show on TV talking about the worst police, uh, the worst police in the, in a particular country. And a lot of the African countries were at, at the bottom of the list. And I, when I when I looked at the criteria, you know, basically it was saying their response time, uh, you know, how you know how many bullets they shot, you know, how many major murders did they have, and you know, and that really happens uh, happens here. So, uh, you know, uh, you don't. It's not an issue. And I, and, I, and as far as the uh, extradition is concerned. Like I said, uh, if you can get here and you keep your keep to you know keep to yourself, you won't have like bounty hunters looking for you. I can say like that's all I can say about that. All right, cool. Uh, so what we'll do? We'll go ahead and close out, Grandmaster. Anything else you want to share in uh, closing? And also tell people how to get re uh, get in contact with you as well. Okay. Well, first of all, I want to say uh, thank you again for letting me have the opportunity to talk. Uh, you know, I just hope that uh, I could be when I wanted to come to uh, uh, Kenya, uh, all I had was the encyclopedia, and that was it. You know, and, I, and then I, so uh, you know, today uh, I, it's sad for me to see so many lies coming out of people's mouths uh, about African, modern African uh, cities. You know, what I mean, uh, being here 21 years, uh, I've you know, I've never seen any disruption in the in the way civil life is. Here. Uh, has been uh, operated here. In fact, it's been quite boring. You know, every day is just the same routine. Uh, peaceful place, people in harmony. You know, and, uh, if if a brother is uh, tired of the rat race and he's been and he feels that need to be called to Africa, uh, they can contact me on uh, Black Man's Guide to Moving to Modern Africa on Facebook. Or you know some of your some of your people have even called me on phone. Some of your people have even emailed me, and mm -hmm. uh, you know whatever help I can be, uh, they, you know let them you know I'll, I'll be there to answer the, any any question, and uh, and and to confirm the fact that uh, it's no more no more nonsense about the Chinese, no more nonsense about the uh, white men control Africa. That's all bullshit. 
and we need to get past that and start talking about the the you know make our plans uh, escape plans from the United States because uh, yesterday or two days ago uh, the Chinese have decided to uh, deal with oil in the yen instead of the dollar and economists are now up in arms and you saw what happened the other day when uh, the Chinese threatened to do this you saw what happened to the stock stock market when America tried to go toe to toe with the U.S. I mean, with the, with China as far as trade wars. Oh, well, I, I would say it is yeah. the stock market is, is back up now. Yeah, the stock think, market I, is back up. But I, think, but I think they came to a, a, some type of agreement, though. That's probably why. Yeah, America had to America had to back down. You know, America is not the one to be backing down, but they had to back down because they know that the, that the, the China has them by the balls. Uh huh. And China has has been collecting gold. Uh, feverish pace for the last four years. They far ahead. They have a seat. They have a plan, and America is behind uh, in in that issue. So, uh, uh, you know, don't be surprised if you start to see where uh, interest rates start to go up in America. Oh yeah, well, they're, they're, they're now they're already going. Up. They're already going up. Yeah, these are these are the first signs. These are the first signs of a problem. You see the the America. See the problem. Another problem with people don't black people don't understand about America. Okay, America doesn't die out there. That's what many of them can say. But these constant ashes every 10 years, every five years, they destabilize everybody's living ability. I mean, remember the 2008, blacks lost half their wealth in that crisis. Half their wealth, black communities, well, they lost so many homes were foreclosed again. Right. So, you know, this is a, it's not a great place to live. Some place you go, like in Africa, where it's stable and it's continually rising up, uh, you can get two or three generations in uh, to, to pass on generational wealth, but uh, black people got to got to got to realize that. So, uh, like I was saying, that uh, these, uh, China just a few days ago, check your check your news read, uh, they started dealing trading in oil in the yen, and it's not going it's not going to discontinue. I said that in another video that uh, they now started trading the money in yen. And uh, once the yen is a, a major currency that people that other countries can decide on and choose from, they're going to start choosing the yen because most most countries in the world don't like America. WikiLeaks, you know, because of colonialization and because of their bad attitudes and their rudeness, they don't like America. America as a country, and uh, and Trump talking about uh, you know asshole. What do you call them, cities? So you know, the Africans is really the average African don't like Trump. And then this thing permeated to government. So don't, don't be surprised if you start seeing uh, uh, the yen become the currency of choice. This thing that got Gaddafi killed and got um, um, Saddam Hussein killed because they tried to go off the dollar standard. The, the Chinese are going to do it. And trust me, the U.S. is not going to be able to do anything or say anything about that. All right, brother. Well, uh, Grandmaster, we appreciate you coming on. Thank you again for uh, joining us. Uh, make sure you guys go to Search for Huru on Instagram, Snapchat, Twitter, and Facebook. Also, go to Africa Personified on those same platforms. Uh, make sure you go to Africa Personified.Africa, search for Huru.com, Dynasamir.com, and go to Amazon.com, search your name, Dynasamir. Please buy a book. Until next time, everyone, we'll be, I will be back on uh, this afternoon. So, again, until next time, peace, family. Peace. Hey.